Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TalkTechBoy.com and we're here today with episode number 38 in our incredible new tutorial series where you're teaching your Raspberry Pi who's boss. What I'm going to need you to do is pour yourself a nice tall glass of ice cold coffee. That is straight up black coffee poured over ice. No sugar, no sweeteners none needed. And as you're pouring your coffee, as always, I want to give a shout out to our friends over at SunFounder. SunFounder is actually sponsoring this most excellent series of video lessons. And in this class, we will be using the SunFounder Raphael Raspberry Pi Kit. Now, most of you guys already have your gear, but if you don't, look down in the description. There is a link over to Amazon where you can pick your gear up. And believe me, your life and my life are going to be a lot easier if we're working on identical hardware. Sunfounder, putting the tech back in toptechboy.com. But enough of this shameless advertising and self-promotion. Let's talk about what I am going to teach you today. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you my solution to the homework assignment that I gave you in lesson number 37. Now in lesson number 37, and I think probably going all the way back to about lesson, uh, lesson 31, we have been building a home security system based on the Raspberry Pi. And where we ended up in lesson number 37, let me uh, switch over here. Let me switch over here to a overhead view. Uh, what we have done so far is we have hooked an LCD, a PIR motion sensor, and a, uh, and a uh, <clears throat> keypad up to the Raspberry Pi, and we have it programmed up where you can arm it, you can disarm it, you can change the password, and while it's armed, if something comes in the view of the PIR sensor, the alarm goes off. Now, what your assignment was for today was to add code where you could have more than one alarm. You could program the type of alarm alert that it made. So what I need to know, how many of you guys were successful? If you were successful, leave a comment down below. I am legend. And if you weren't able to do it, leave a comment down below. I folded up like a cheap Walmart lawn chair. I fear there's a third category emerging and your comment might be, I am a lazy couch potato and I prefer to watch other people code rather than doing my own project. So in either case, leave a comment down below. Let me know how you guys are doing. Okay, so we're going to jump in where we left off. But since I know some of you guys might be coming to this lesson without having taken the whole class, so I'm just really, really very quickly going to remind you how we have this hooked up. Okay, again, this is the keypad from the SunFounder kit. And remember, coming left to right, these leads are row zero, row one, row two, row three, column zero, column one, column two, column three. And how do we pick uh, hook those up? Well, on the Raspberry Pi, using the physical numbering system and starting with row zero, the le leftmost uh, key, the leftmost pin, we connect that to pin 11 and then the next one over 13, the next one over 15. Then we have to jump down to 29, 31, 33, 35, and 37. So as you're going across the keypad, you are coming down to these Aqua GPIO pins over on this side. This is the inside set of physical pins. So that's how we hook up the keypad. Now, if we come back over here, the uh, LCD is very easy to hook up because if you look at the SunFounder LCD on the bottom, you can see that the four leads are very clearly, uh, the four leads are very clearly labeled and it goes top to bottom when the pins are pointed to the right upside down ground ground goes to ground. VCC, very important, needs to go to five volts on the Raspberry Pi. This is a five volt LCD. And then the SDA and the SCL go up to the SCL and SDA go up to these purple pins, SDA to SDA and SCL to SCL. And now you have, uh, you have the, uh, the LCD hooked up. And then finally, what you need to hook up, finally, what you need to hook up is the, uh, uh, what you need to hook up is this little uh, this little uh, PIR sensor, and I want you to see that I have the PIR sensor upside down, and I have the pins pointed towards me. 
upside down, the pin's pointed towards you. The left pin is VCC, that needs to go to five volts. The center pin is your data out pin, and I believe I have that hooked up to GPIO pin 12 up there. It's kind of the first one available on the outside row. And then the right pin, when you're holding it like this upside down with pins towards you, the right pin is ground. And ground goes to ground, and for this pin 14 there is a convenient pin. So I've got, I've taken a few minutes, and you guys that are taking the class, I really apologize that you got to listen to me for three minutes every day, or you know, every lesson show how to hook this up. But I do know that some people just jump in and do not, and are not taking the full class. And so they need just just a second to get caught up. Okay, now we're gonna start with the code that we left off with in the last lesson, in lesson number 37. Now again, if you're just jumping in or if you are having problems with your code, you can come to the most excellent Ooh, I need to change the view here. Give me a second so you can see what you need to see. Come to the most excellent www.toptechboy.com and you can search on something with the happy little green search icon like Raspberry Pi Lesson 37, Raspberry Pi Security System, uh-huh. And then you come down here and this is the code that we ended up with last week. So you just click on the little, uh, the little double page icon there. It says copy to the clipboard. Then we're gonna come over to Thony or Thony, depending on how you wanna pronounce it. We're gonna right mouse click, we are gonna paste. And then this is the code that we had from last week. Just to make sure the universe is in proper working order, let's run this and make sure it works. Okay, so what I am going to do is I'm going to switch back to the overhead view. Okay, and now I'm going to run the program. We will run the program. And also, I guess there's a couple of things I should remind you real quick that this a couple of lines here, this import LCD 1602, that library, if you're a drive-by shooter, you have got to, uh, you have got to uh, load that in. And I think I show you how to do that in lesson 25. So on the playlist on YouTube, look at lesson number 25. It's using an LCD 1602 display with I2C. I think I show you how to load the library in that lesson. And then also you need to load the library for the keypad, uh, which is the Klib, uh, the import Klib. You've got to get these two libraries on your Raspberry Pi. And I show you how to get the Klib library in uh, video lesson number 33. Okay, video lesson number 33, I show you how to uh, how to uh, get that library. Both of those libraries are on my website, but just the two videos will show you how to do it. Okay, enough of this trying to catch the drive-by shooters up. We're gonna jump in and start coding. So the first thing we're gonna do is just make sure that this still works. So I'm going to run the program. So I come up here and say run and uh, could, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the other thing that I should, uh, should tell you is in your main Python program where you have this program stored, you need to have a sound file, either an MP3 file or a WAV file that you want to be your alarm sound, okay? Either an MP3 or a WAV file that you want to be your alarm sound. Now you see, I got an error here because it didn't find that. That's because I renamed my alarms because the purpose of today's lesson is to be able to have five different alarm sounds that you could use. And I think now I'm calling it like AL1, AL2, AL3, AL4, AL5. Let me come over here and show you that. That is on line 16 of the code. You have to put here the name of your alarm sound. And so my default alarm sound is AL1. If you call yours AL1, make sure that you have a sound file in your main Python program, uh, the, your main Python folder, the folder that contains this program, have a file called AL1 that is a sound file. Sound good? Okay, so then I think we should be ready to come over here and see if this thing runs. So just make sure that you've got your sound file in there. And guys, your life's gonna be easier if you watch all the lessons, uh, you know, the last four or five, and don't just try to jump in in the middle of this project. Okay, so let's come up here. We're gonna run it. 
Okay. And that time we just got a warning because I didn't cleanly exit the last time. So how do I arm the program? I put A for arm and then the password. One, two, three, four, five. And then D for enter. Okay. And nothing happened. So I have A for arm. One, two, three, four, and D. Okay, armed. I just wasn't deliberate in my keys. So now the system is armed and you can see the PIR sensor is pointed away from me. And if I come in front of it, intruder alert. Okay, that's pretty neat. So that's my first alarm sound. Now, if I want to disarm, I put B, password one, two, three, four, and D, and then you can see I'm unarmed. Now, if I want to change the password, I put C, and then the password one, two, three, four, and then the old password, uh, uh, and then I put D to enter it. Now you can see it's prompting me for the password, the new password, one, two, one, two, D. And then you can see it has the new password, then it erases it. Now if I want to arm it, I got to put A, one, two, one, two, and D. And now it's armed. And I didn't mean to do that. I didn't mean to do that. You have to be very still around this thing. It's very sensitive. Problem is I have it mounted. I have it just laying on my desk. And so it's pretty easy to set that thing off. And so let's see if we can end it. I can exit the program with star and D and then that should take us out. Okay, so now it's not gonna make that noise anymore, but at least we see that the program is working for all the things. Now, next time you run the program, it goes back to the default. It goes back to the default password. Okay, so let me uh, let me come over here and let's talk about what the assignment was. The assignment was was to create options where you can choose different alarm sounds that you want. Okay, you can choose different alarm sounds that you want. And so the way I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that by, you know, I've kind of already used my A for arm, my B for disarm, my C for change password, and my D for enter, and my star for exiting out of the program. So I'm kind of running out of keys. So I'm going to have to do sort of like a two letter. And so what do I want to do? Change alarm. So what two letters would I use? I would use C and A. Okay, I would use C and A for change alarm. Now, do I want any Yahoo off the street changing the alarm? No, so you would need to enter change alarm, okay? And then you would need to tell it which alarm sound you wanted. And your assignment was to have five different alarm sounds. So you would have change alarm one would be the existing alarm sound, one. Change alarm two would be your second sound file. Change alarm three would be your third. Change alarm four, change alarm five. Those would be your five different things that you could put in there. Now, after you put change alarm one, the alarm you want, do you want a Yahoo to be able to change the alarm? No, so what would you do? Change alarm one and then put in the password, one, two, three, four, and then what? D for enter. And that's kind of the mindset as we go through and do this code. And so really, if you think about it, what I've just described out loud is gonna be pretty easy to code, I think. And so what we're gonna to need to do is we're gonna to need to come over here to the code view, and you can see that I have, if it's, if it's A in the password, then I arm, if it's the letter B in the password, then I um, unarm. If it's the letter C in the password, then I uh, change the password. And then what I need to do is I need to have a new one. Well, what would that be? That would be if CMD, if CMD is equal, equal what? Change alarm CA1, okay. Do I want a bozo to do this? No, so I'm gonna require the what? The plus the PWD. 
And then in this case, what do I want to do? Well, I know if I get in here, I'm going to change the alarm sound. But then when I exit this, if I want to go back and still be armed. And so I need to go ahead and put a little hook in here to tell it that I want it to be armed. So I'm going to go ahead and put in my string, which I read from the keypad. But instead of reading from the keypad, I'm going to put it in here. And my string is going to be the arm command, which is what? A. And then remember that if statement above, it's going to be looking for the password. So plus PWD. So if A, if C, if, if C, <coughs> CA1 plus password were in here, then I'm going to say we want to arm it after we come out of here. And then what I'm just going to do is I'm going to say mixer music load. And then what am I going to load this time? I'm going to load, uh, AL1, which is my first music file, dot MP3. Okay. Now you would name it here whatever you named your first music file, your first sound file. What kind of sounds did you guys do? Did you come up with five cool sounds? I like the sounds I'm using, and you guys could do something like this or do something different. So I'm gonna I'm gonna load AL1 MP3. Now when I come out of this what, what state am I going to be in? I'm going to be in the A state. So the next time through the loop, where am I going to be? I'm going to be in this arm section. So I'm going to be armed. And so that is what we are going to do there. And now I think what we want to do is what? We just want to do that again for the other commands. And so I'm going to take, the, uh, it doesn't like that because I didn't close that string. So now I'm going to take this and do a control C and then that's alarm one. Then uh, this will be alarm two and this will be alarm three and this will be alarm four and this will be alarm five. So let's go in and fix it to make it like I said it. So this would be uh, choose alarm what? Choose alarm two. Okay, and then instead of alarm one, I would want to play alarm two. And this would be choose alarm three. And then I would want to play what? Alarm three. And then this would be choose alarm four. And then I would want to play alarm four. And then this would be choose alarm five. And then I would want to play alarm five. Now I will say that in trying to find the, the sound files, they were not all MP3. Some were waves. And for me, CA3 was a wave. So I need to put AL3 as a wave just because that's the sound files that I had. And then for me, uh, AL4 was also a wave like that. And then one, two, and five were indeed, one, two, and five were indeed MP3s. Could it really be this easy? I ask, could it really be this easy? We'll see. I don't know how many mistakes I can make in that few lines of code, but we will see. So we're going to come in and we're going to run the program. Okay, no errors because I exited cleanly last time. And so let's say I do A, one, two, three, four, and D for enter. So I've just armed it and I'm all clear. Okay, you got it. You're going to get to hear the air raid siren again. <laughs> ask you, if you were an intruder, would that not intimidate you? I think it would scare me if I was an intruder. So I like that one. Okay, now the moment of truth. Can we reprogram it from the keypad to a different alarm sound? Can we do that? Let's see. So what would I do? C, A for choose alarm. <laughs> I'm going to annoy you before this is over. I was trying to get that out of view where I wouldn't be tripping it, but I put in CA and then what do I put in? What alarm do I want? I want alarm two. And then I have to put in what the password one, two, three, four. And then I'm going to do what D 
And so now that should have put in the new alarm. Now it kind of scared me when it went off, so I might not have typed the code in right, but let's see. I didn't put the code in right, and therefore it's not get, getting into that loop. And we ought to error check for that later, but I'm going to say, I want to choose alarm two, and then I need to put in the password one, two, three, four, and then I need to put in D. Now let's hope that it got it that time. <laughs> How did you like that one? <laughs> I think that would scare me. I think that one would scare me. Did you like that one as an alarm? Okay, this time I'm gonna, let's do it again. Maybe I did, went a little bit too, there it goes. <laughs> I think that's a good alarm. Okay, now let's do alarm three. C, A, choose alarm three. And then one, two, three, four, and D. Okay, now if I entered that right, I should be on alarm three. <laughs> That's one of my favorite ones. <laughs> That's one of my favorite ones. Did you hear that? Let's listen to that one again. And why is it staying there? Because I wait 10 seconds in there so it doesn't just keep playing the same sound over and over, but let's listen cocking a shotgun. <laughs> you like that one? I like that one. So what was that? That was three. So now let's do choose alarm four and then password one, two, three, four, and D. Okay, let's see if we got it. Just kind of chaos, you know, just sort of like chaos. And you see, really, if people are intruding your home, they're going to be afraid. They're going to be scared. They're going to be nervous. And if something happens very unexpected. I keep bumping the desk. I'm sorry. But if something happens unexpected. Okay, we're unarmed. Uh, and, and just what's happening is, is that it's very hard for me to be spill, still enough. Even if I'm typing, I'm creating some vibration and that sensor is very sensitive. So you need to, you know, mount it in a proper place. But I think that would scare people because if somebody breaks in and all of a sudden they're hearing glass break, chaos, all this noise, I think their tendency would be to panic and run. That's just me though. Okay, so that was in fact alarm four. Now we're gonna to go to alarm five. But remember, I don't have to alarm it and choose the alarm. When I choose the alarm, it exits that in the arm state. So I could say, choose alarm five, and then one, two, three, four, like that, and now D. Okay, it's armed and it's not going off because I'm not bumping the table. What do you think would be a good alarm for number five? Looking for an answer in the live chat. What would be a good one? <laughs> I bumped the table. <laughs> okay, and we got the all clear. I really should have set this up with that not a little bit more isolated so we wouldn't be setting off on me bouncing and bumping around, but let's try it again. <laughs> Do you think that would scare you? I think that would scare me if I was an intruder. Okay, now let's turn it off from the keypad and that's star D and then that should, 
exit the program. Boom. Okay, that was a little bit of an easy lesson, a little bit of a fun lesson, uh, but I hope you have fun finding good alarm sounds. And you guys put your solutions on YouTube. Make your little YouTube video and show your solutions because I think this is getting pretty neat. Okay, so now I can uh, I can uh, op interact with the program through the keypad. I can give user feedback through the screen, and I can uh, you know operate the uh, the PIR sensor, and everything's working just from the keypad. But why is this? A couple of things you got to think about. Why is this not completely a remote system? Why is it not completely a remote system? Well, one thing is I am still running this from an electrical outlet, but I guess that's really okay because wherever we mounted this we could plug it in so I guess that's okay we could also think about putting it like on a USB power bank or we could think about running it off of maybe a USB power bank with a solar cell on it or something like that so the power is not such a uh, such a big issue but if you think that you have this mounted in the corner or you have it mounted in the wall you know up on the wall or something like that what is the issue that you have the issue that you have is I'm still using the mouse or the keyboard to actually come over, right? Let's come over here. What we're having to do is come over and run it. We're having to come over and run it from this little green button. And so if the thing is just up on the wall, it's not going to be connected to your screen. You're not going to have Thani open and you're not going to be able to do it that way. And so what we're going to do next week is I'm going to show you how to remotely access your alarm system from your PC and to be able to do things remotely. Now, I know some of you guys are fairly advanced out there and you know that if you're running VNC on your PC and VNC on your Raspberry Pi, you can actually have a remote desktop into your Raspberry Pi. But next week, I'm going to show you an easier thing, which is just called PuTTY, which you can get just a very, very simply get a terminal window on your PC and then launch your programs or do whatever you want on your Raspberry Pi from your PC. So that's what I'll show you next week. If you guys want to have a homework, we'll go see if you can install PuTTY and remotely access your alarm system from your PC. Okay, guys, man, I hope you're having as much fun taking these lessons as I am making them. I am really having a lot of fun with the Raspberry Pi. I hope you guys, I hope you guys are doing your homework and not just sitting here and watching me code. Because why? Because the world needs more people doing engineering and writing code and fewer people sitting around watching silly cat videos. Guys, if you like the lesson, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. And you guys can help me with the old YouTube juice if you leave comments down below and share this video with others. Paul McWhorter with DopTechBoy.com. I will talk to you guys later.